Okay, here we go with some more Scred Red. This is so tempting. I, I think I'm going to keep it. This is certainly risky. Um, but here's the thing. If we draw a land, we're on the draw. And if we draw a land, then we have a turn. We get to play Blood Moon on turn three, right? And we have three mana uh, with the Mind Stone. Even if we don't hit land in that first draw step, we can play the mountain, play the spell bomb, have another draw step where if we hit land, we can play stone, and if we don't, we can cycle it. So this is a risky keep, but I think it has a good chance of working out. I mean, basically, we get three cards to find one land, and our, de our, our deck does stuff. So we have a lot of good cards against this sort of shenanigans, too. No, we did not get there on the first one. This was a risky keep, to be sure, and maybe, you know, we didn't need to, but if any, if either of our top two is land, the hand's great. If any of the top three is land, the hand is fine. So it's really just a situation where the top three aren't land. And we have, you know, probably uh, uh, like 21 cards or something in our deck there um, that are land out of 55. So we're taking better than a one in three shot three times. So that's my reasoning. Uh, clearly, we're going to get punished for it. <laughs> okay. Our opponent only has one land, too, but he has creatures. I don't know. My logic's sound. Can't be results-oriented. This is what people talk about a lot, and you'll maybe hear some Magic Pros talk about it. And it basically amounts to, if you're making the statistically correct decision, I would rather make that decision and be and have it not work out a uh, uh, hundred times out of a hundred than I would make the wrong decision. No. You can argue over whether or not it was the right decision, but I think it, I, I judged our hand to be strong enough um, that if, you know, we, that if it worked out, we were going to win. As it looks now, we're probably pretty dead. Our opponent has what I would call a pretty good one-lander. <laughs> if we were to go mountain into anger of gods, that'd be nice. Yep. All right, we got a turn here. Okay. I don't know if it's enough. If he has another one drop, we're probably dead. Or land into a two drop for Thalia's Lieutenant. This looks very similar. We played this deck uh, on stream a while back, you know, some number of months ago. Uh, just red white humans. Very good. Are we dead? F four, five, six? Not yet. All right, we have an honest to God out here. We draw anger. The gods were in the game. We did not. Okay, didn't work out. I don't know. You, you can make the argument that it's worth seeing six, because six is not significantly worse than seven. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I, I felt okay about it. I think our deck's pretty good here. I think we can go one less Storm Breath, one more Rabble Master. We're going to be playing defense, which our deck is perfectly happy with. Um... This is the sort of matchup where Koth is a little worse, but I think it's still fine. I don't wonder how many reds. I don't think this is good. It's not a burn deck. Honestly, this is better to attack too, but... Maybe we're supposed to board this in against Amaria, actually. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to I'm just gonna do this for now. I think our deck is like extremely well set up to win this matchup, so... Maybe we could, could have boarded out Blood Moons. I'm not sure. But we can also lock him off white mana, which is more important to him than anything else. This doesn't have a lot of what we want, but it has a turn 3 P and Karen, which I think is pretty good. Our opponent's mold to 6. I don't know about that hand from game 1. It's possible it was correct to mulligan. You know, I think my math on on you know what our what our hand needs to hit, especially keep in mind we're in the dark, right? So that hand has the you know it has it has possibilities of that turn three blood moon, which could just lock people out. So, you know, the upside to that hand was very high. 
and I think it was enough to justify the risk, considering the odds were in our favor to hit the land when we wanted it. But I don't know. Interesting discussion for sure. Feel free to tell me in the YouTube comments how bad of a keep it was. All right, so we get to play Pia next turn, and then hopefully use that to protect our cough. Uh, depending on how what our opponent has here, we might be able to play Cough and reasonably have it survive even. Uh oh. That's unfortunate. I guess it's okay against. Uh, it's not that good. It stops the combo, I guess. We're gonna watch when I can draw a fourth land. Drew both of the five drops after boarding one out. Yeah, we'll see. We hit a land, we're still in fine shape. The old Stony Silence land destruction gonna get us here. Alright, bring it on. Alright, thank god. Okay. And just play our PA and Karen. And this is actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get a bunch of life, I agree. But this is actually pretty good because this still gives us something to do with these things that got Sony silenced. And so it's just going to get bolted. That's fine. Fair enough. Slows down the attacks. Play Koth next turn. I love this. I love this Koth. It being a ritual. I remember in, when he was legal and standard, I played sort of a big red deck. It was like a red control deck, pretty similar to this. Played a warm coil and stuff. Um, but you could play like a mana rock on turn two. Um, play your Koth on like turn five or whatever when you have five lands, uh, or and then ritual it. You know the minus to get the mana and use it to play a warm coil or something. It was sweet. Do a lot of stuff with this Koth. Okay, well, if he comes in with this, I will gladly block. He will not. Land? Yeah. So, for instance, look at this. We can play Koth, minus Koth, put him down to one, get a Stormbreath Dragon out of it. Or we can just play Stormbreath. Uh, the advantage to doing that with Koth is that, you know, it. He sends stuff at it, and if we kept our thing back to block, he doesn't really have good attacks because he'd be throwing away a champion. Um, so if you made that attack, like if we just played Koth and minus it to play Stormbreath Dragon and then kept our guys back to block, uh, he could bolt He could bolt path a Thopter. We'd still have a block on the champion. This would trade with this. Um... And we'd be, you know, we could try to protect Koth back up. I don't think I'm going to do it, though, because with Mentor, the Meek can play, uh, and only two cards in hand, he could reload and, and find answers. Whereas, since we have two of these guys, uh, I think I'm just going to play aggro. We're just going to attack him. It's got protection from white and haste, so let's just get in there. Swing for six, put him at 15, next turn, do it again. Turn after that, we'll assume he swung out at us, so we can play Koth and make a 4-4. Four, four. So it'll be six, put him at fifteen. Next or so I guess he gains life, right? So it puts him at sixteen. Next turn he goes to seventeen, but then takes ten, goes to seven. Turn after that we attack for lethal. Uh, at least by, you know, our creatures. He'll probably get some life back from his own guys here. Yep. Yuck. That's the kind of thing that could allow him to race. If he has Thalia's Lieutenant to follow it up or something. I don't know. We do a lot of damage, but... I you know, I decided we're the beatdown because of Mentor the Meek. And I don't know if that'll end up being correct or not. But it is the line I'm taking. We could also go like land land, monstrous it. I just don't think sitting back... While his guys get bigger and bigger and draws cards off Mentor the Meek helps us. Hmm. 
Hmm. Now I'm going to change my plan a little bit. We're going to scred this thing. And then play our Koth. Plus our Koth and attack. And if he sends things at Koth, that's fine with us. We could still play the Storm Breath, uh, which puts him at 18, and then we attack for 10 to put him at 8. That's sort of tempting. Um, but just doing this, I think, is fine. I mean, we're still swinging for 10 this way, and it makes him have to care about Cough a little more. I think, he's, I think we're going to get this game, but... Getting that drawing that scred was pretty important. I don't think there's a way we can lose here. It's gonna path our mountain. Sure. Yeah, he's down to one. I would say basically the only way I think we could lose is if his cards were Reckless Bushwhacker and um Thalia's lieutenant, and then he drew land. Then I think he'd probably be swinging for lethal. This looks exactly like that red-white deck we played several months back. Oh, we've been smashed. He's got all the artifact hate. Gross. Oh, he gets to send it at our cough, too. Yuck. Or he can send it to us, put us at nine. He didn't do that. I think he was supposed to send it to us, put us at nine. Nah, I just don't think he has a way to win, actually. We don't have lethal, though. Which means I'll keep this back. Ooh, well, that's still not lethal. I'm going to keep this back to block uh, so that shenanigans don't happen. Now it does put it, it would have put him in three, which means the bolt can kill him, but he's just not going to have answers to Storm Breaths anyways. We just have to not die to something weird from him. Like Thalia's Lieutenant. Like he could play Thalia's Lieutenant, pay one, hit a bolt or something, hit us for a bunch. Now we can just chump block. Ooh, Perforos. I thought it was going to be Hero of Oxid Ridge. Hero of Oxid Ridge would have killed us. It would have been one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve from the battle cry. We would have died to that. We're not dead to this. That would have been terrifying. Hey right, man, let's play game three. It's good to know. And he's got the Sony Silence too. There's a lot a lot good to know here. I mean, maybe we just want the. It's so slow, though, especially when he's wrecking our artifacts like that. We basically have no answers to that. I'm boarding out a relic, though. We just need cards to do stuff. Making our goblins attack every turn is not helpful, though. We're not the beat down here. These relics don't do very much, but we just really need to draw anger of the gods early. I don't know. This is actually kind of a difficult matchup now that we know he just has infinite artifact hate. I don't think it's great against us either. I mean, it's fine. It was good there, but it's it's not incredible. I mean, what if those had just been cards that attacked us? All right, here we go. Our opponent's mold to six. We've kept on six. We're going to go ahead and keep the scred. Maybe I'm not. I think I'm actually not going to keep the scred. We just want to draw a land. We, I mean, we have to, as long as we can cast anger, I don't think we're going to lose. So, yeah, I'd feel really bad about keeping that scred if we drew scred then peer Kia and P and Kira and Missalan. Now do I scred this? That's the question. I'm not going to. Ah, it was the one draw that punishes us. 
I mean, we have to play this, but that it was the one draw that punches us was 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 drawing the mind stone there. Um, because we couldn't, you know, we can't scred, and he gets to play in a Johnny's Pride mate. And because we didn't scred it, he gets yeah, that's fine. It still gets angered though. We'll take our two for one with anger of the gods. Wow, we can still kill this. Good thing he doesn't have another one drop. Yeah, this is just exactly this deck we played a while back. Which Soul Scissors mashed up with humans. Uh, but you play this combo because it's just too good not to play. But this deck is actually really good. I loved Hero of Oxid Ridge at the 4-drop spot. Uh, because it keeps the chump blocking. It's another haste creature. It gives battle cry. It's a human. It, so it helps you with all these lieutenants and champion of the parishes. Uh, and I actually have been thinking about coming back to the deck. It's budget, at least the version we built, was like a hundred under a hundred dollars in paper, or I think it was more than that in paper because we played Rugged Prairie, less than that online. But I, I was thinking about looping back to it because now we have Inspiring Vantage, which is hugely important. It's like our opponent's going to Apostles Blessing, so that's annoying. But it does, uh, with the Soul Warden gone, at least it doesn't get bigger. And this could be the card that punishes us, though. This card's very good. No, that's if he has ways to continue to make it bigger. Because this right now represents a trade with it. Would like to draw land, though. He's got five land. Only two cards in hand. Wow, look at that. He's just got nothing, huh? Fortunately, we also have nothing. I guess we attack. I mean, we can at least, if we draw a land, play this relic, be in the position where we can block, exile, and recast. Uh, so at the very least, I don't think we're losing ground. Uh-oh. This sucks crazy. Maybe it's not humans. Maybe there's no Thalia's Lieutenant in here at all. I mean, it'd be weird since we saw Champion of the Parish, but... That's mana. Not exactly what we wanted, but it is mana. I guess we continue to be aggressive. Yeah, I mean, he's taking a bunch of damage. If we hit land, we can play Storm Breath. He's flooded out very hard. I'm going to take this. You know, we could have scredded the Legion Loyalist, but I'd like to draw a land and scred this. Or we'll draw a land and just attack for a lethal. Force him to path a guy he really doesn't want to path. Well, that works. Let's get in there. Not lethal. One short of lethal. Now we can play P and Kieran and just chump block. I'm just gonna do that. It's more mana efficient. We could have played Koth and tried to kill him, but I don't like that when he's representing Path. I like just playing this and uh, having chump blocks. Well, I guess it's just this chump block, but we're we're pretty safe here. Weird game. Now this is look at this. Okay. Does it give trample? Yeah, he's just gonna die. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna end with my tokens. He can't kill them both, and then we'll bolt him. I mean, I don't. Is there something I'm missing here? Blessed Alliance would be pretty good, I guess. So maybe we get in with everything. If it's Blessed Alliance, he could use all the modes. So, yeah, we should attack with these. Sure. 
mean, I guess he could trade, trade, take two, die to Pia. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to do it this way, so if he responds with Blessed Alliance Game 4 Life, we can bolt him. I'm not trying to slow roll the guy, I'm trying to play around what he could have, but he doesn't have anything, so we got there. But um, it's important in situations like that where you're ahead to think about how you could lose the game. Uh, and how we lose that game there is making some, you know, weird greedy attack, and then him having a big Blessed Alliance blow out, and then, um, you know, drawing, like, pump spell, and or, you know, guy thing make his guy big, Apostles Blessing sort of combination um there are certainly you know ways we could lose that game even if they're super unlikely but that was what i was trying to think through there 